But you know how the story originally broke? A Packers podcaster named Big B. Shout out, Big oh, B. Jamal Williams is inside the 30, out in front, a Green Bay touchdown. Jamal Williams is the GOAT and the GOAT. That's all you need to know. Yeah, let's keep it under 25 minutes, all right? We might be too young to have a spotted cow, but we are both diehard Packers fans. Second, the Underage Packers podcast. This is episode 160 after the Packers season came to an end in San Francisco on Saturday. Unfortunately, rough 24 to 21 loss. Once again, felt like a game, you know, just the, the story of the playoffs for the Packers for the last decade having so many opportunities that they didn't take advantage of and just having a win ripped right out of their hands. Um, so it's a rough one, but I, I think, you know, four days out from it, it, it took us some time to grieve, obviously, uh, as you can tell by the the lateness of this episode being posted. But I think as uh, we will discuss, we have fully recovered. So we do appreciate you taking the time to tune into this episode. And we hope you guys, have uh, recovered and sobered up from that loss on Saturday as well. Um, so let's get into it. We had like, some exciting news break today, so we are excited to talk about that. I'm Joey, and joining me as always, my co-host, Big B. How are we feeling midweek now? Yeah, we're feeling pretty good now. I think, you know, like you said, we recovered. I recovered. Uh, you know, we got some we got some big news to talk about that are that is very exciting. So let's get right into that. Yes, exactly. So the Packers announced today that they will not be retaining Joe Barry, or at the very least, he's not going to be their defense coordinator. Um, Rob Domalski in his report today for ESPN said that he might remain on the staff in some capacity. I I don't know if I buy that, but this is just a really big decision for Matt LaFleur. I really think he made the right choice here. Um, you know, this defense, you know, despite what it showed on tape the, the past few weeks of the season that was encouraging um but i think you know the the last drive where san francisco was able to so easily drive down the field and score and win the game i i really think that's all you need to make this decision if you're matt fleur and then also i mean you have to to view the whole the whole product and not just this last stretch of the season here um and you know overall joe barry has had three years to prove that he's worthy for this job and he has not shown many signs of it. Um, and also, you know, on top of that, the bad situational um, instances like San Fran and many other times this season where they, they just get all way too conservative um, in the final drives. You know, you also have just embarrassing performances against some of the worst offenses and quarterbacks in football, you know, letting up 30 to the Carolina Panthers and, um, and then, you know, blood and Tommy DeVito, Baker Mayfield, just to name a few of guys who were able to slice this defense up. You know, you you, you can't have that. And this Packers team, with how bright the future is for this offense, with how much talent they have on defense, with how much uh, they've invested in the defense side of the ball, um, the, the, the defense, you know, it, it can't be as bad as it was. And more importantly, it, it can't be as unreliable as it was. This is only the first year of the Jordan Love era, but we already saw some of the same issues that this Packers team had early on in Aaron Rodgers' career of just never being able to put it together. Um, you know, they had some solid years in there, but they were never able to be a reliable group. If the game came down to the Packers' defense, then the Packers were losing, um, and, and we saw that a few times this season. So, I like I said, though, this is a big move from Matt LaFleur, a big decision. One of his good friends... Um, and I, I, I'm glad he had, uh, had, um, the, the guts to do it. Um, big B, uh, thoughts on this big move for, uh, Green Bay here. Yeah, I was actually shocked that it that came this soon. I did not expect to see that, uh, this morning when I got the notification, but, you know, the writing was pretty much on the wall after the Bucks game. I mean, everything that happened in the Bucks game, the Matt LaFleur saying he has to, he's being more involved into the defensive meetings and stuff. And, you know, you, you almost had to expect it. You know, the defense did play good at the end of the season. But, you know, every defense the past, what, five years has played good at the end of the yeah. year. So, I mean, how much can you put into that? And, you know, the, especially the, the Bucks game, like I just talked about, and then the Giants game and the Carolina game, that was just some of the worst defensive football I've ever seen in my life. 
So this is definitely a smart move. I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited to see who Matt LaFleur picks to be the new defensive coordinator because I think that's going to have a lot of say in Matt's future. Absolutely. Yeah, this was the first big move in going from a team that could be, that was, you know, this year they showed a lot of promise as being a team that can be a, a, a top in team in the very new future. But I think Matt had to make this move. He had to put his foot down um, oh, yeah. and, and make this move. And I think this will really elevate them now. Well, I shouldn't say that, but this will be something that really decides how the, the future looks for this team. Um, like I said, the defense has just been unreliable. And so the offense seems to be on the right track. Um, not only with how their players are developing, but just with how the front office is able to bring talent to that side of the ball. Um, Brian Gudikins has hit on a lot of offensive draft picks and, you know, probably more than he has on defense. Um, you know, he's, he's had some good hits on defense as far as early round picks go and Rashawn Geary, Jagger Alexander, Lucas Van Ness seems to be going down that that path as well. Um, but he, he's also had early round misses on defense, Darnell Savage. Um Eric, well, Eric Stokes is still a question mark, but then, you know, on offense, he is just able to find talent for there pretty much in any round. Um, you know, Jordan Love is the main one, but then all, all of the wide receivers, um, you know, Christian Watson and Jaden Reed were both drafted in the second round. But other than that, I believe everybody was drafted after round three. So day four picks and the wide receiver group and then offensive line as well. I mean, all, all five of the starters now are Gudikins picks, obviously, um, and they had a really solid season. You have most of them, too, were not early-round picks. Josh Myers and Elton Jenkins are both second-rounders, and then everybody else, again, day three guys. Um, and then you got the two tight ends there. Long story short, you know, <laughs> Brian and this front office have done a really solid job finding talent on def or on offense. Um, now – they're going to have to really focus on defense and like they've invested, like I said, they've invested a lot into that side of the ball, but I've just not been able to hit on them. Um, so going to be interesting to see the future of this defense. And I, I, I'm sure, you know, even Matt, even though Matt wasn't around, I'm sure there is a little bit of Brian that saw how much of a, a part the, the bad defenses in green Bay had on Aaron Rodgers career. Um, I need to check. Because I, I believe Brian had a brief stint in Seattle, but I need to see what years he was in Green Bay. Because I believe he was here for all of, oh no, okay, he never was in Seattle. He's been with the Packers since 98. So he fully saw, um, you know, from Rogers' career, like 2011, 2012, 2013, 2016, um, how, you know, 2019 too, how but a defense is really needed to get the most out of your um, elite quarterback. So going to be interesting. And hopefully this is the dawn of a new era. We've seen the Packers kind of try to reset the side of the ball a few times now. Um, well, I don't know if I'd say that though, because they, they've still stuck with kind of from capers to Pettin and the Barry. It's kind of been the same older guys, traditional type defenses that are really conservative. Um, yeah. So I, I really hope, though, Brian and Matt are able to take a look at this and say, OK, we need in the same way they needed a culture change when they hired Rich Masaccia for special teams. They they need a culture change on defense. They definitely have the players to be a more aggressive defense. And now it's just going to be up to finding the right coordinator to put those guys in the best position to succeed. Um, so looking at that, Big B, any guys that stick to, out to you as potential barrier pick replacements? Um, I mean, I really don't know what to, to really look at, but like, I know Chris Harris had, um, was interviewed last time around, um, before Barry got hired and he's, he's a guy I have my eye out. I know I saw a tweet uh, earlier today that said he had a great interview last time around. You got Don Mar Martindale, former Giants defensive coordinator, who seems to be floating around a little bit in the Packers Packers Twitter. Um, you know, he, he would be a fun one to get, but I don't I don't know his defensive numbers and you know he he is doesn't have a job for a reason, I guess. <laughs> Audrey Pleasant is another guy who um was with Green Bay for a little bit, I think last year as the passing game coordinator, I believe. 
So he would be probably getting an interview if I had to guess. Um, maybe even Jerry Gray, who who was the uh, cornerbacks coach. I would love that. That would be awesome. But I highly doubt that would happen. But yeah, just a few, few guys that I've I've uh, looked up and uh, you know on my watch list, I guess. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see who uh, just two they interview this time around. Um, you know, yeah. we know Matt is prone to interview his buddies. Um, you know, Ajiro Evero is one of those guys, uh, and they interviewed him last time as well. Um, you know, I, I saw Peter Bukowski bring up a good point on Twitter. Um, even a, a broken clock is wrong twice a day, I guess. I'm kidding. I love Peter. Um, and I think he has a lot of good takes and gets a lot of hate, but I just know some people would like that. But anyways, he, he said that, you know, if if Mac goes back to Jerry Gray, it would be kind of continuing this history of just sticking with the same model in Green Bay, which is a fair take. I, I really like Jerry Gray. Um, and I think he would kind of bring that culture change. Um, but it, uh, like I said, it will be interesting to see who they interview. I think Chris Harris, I, I, I mean, this is purely just based off of vibes and Twitter talk. I feel like Chris Harris is the leading candidate. I really like his resume, you know, has been in coaching since 23 or uh, 2013, uh, was a player for five, uh, seven years in the league, has really just had a, a career of quickly elevating. He's not stuck at jobs for a long time for good reasons. Uh, you know, he's a quality control coach with the Bears for two years in 2013 and 14, spent three years in San Diego slash Los Angeles as a St. Stephen's backs coach, um, spent two or three years with the commanders as Stephen's backs coach, and then has spent this past year as a pass game coordinator and cornerbacks coach for Tennessee. Um, so I, I, you know, he, I don't see, yeah, he never coached with Fleur. Um, but you know, like you mentioned, uh, interviewed with Packers back when they were last hired a defense coordinator and apparently that went really well. So we can only take Albert Breer. I was, I believe that was who had that report that the interview went well. So, just interested to see the interview. I mean, there's some more flash names as well, like Bill Belichick, Mike Vrabel. Um, I mean, oh, Belichick is happen. what? They're never going to happen. Uh, okay, I don't. I think Belichick is more likely than very Vrabel. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think both of them are below five percent of happening. But okay. the Bel, the Belichick train has been like it seems le like less of a pipe dream than it did a few <laughs> weeks ago with the amount of teams that are just not interviewing him um and i like to a certain extent like i i kind of get it i mean the patriot way you could argue is a little bit outdated um and even you know the success he had uh before like you know i i just don't know if a coach like him is can survive in the modern NFL. And you're basically going in the same way that you like that the Buccaneers hoped with Brady, like in some other teams too, of just getting like the last few years out of a quarterback. You're, you're hoping you can get the last few good years out of Belichick and really like the five years in the future is completely off the table. Um, and I mean, like he's probably going to want some roster control, and, you know, he really – he might have to adjust uh, and, and go to not, like, his ideal situation of having full control of the roster. I don't know how much of that he wants. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how Belichick – how this ends up playing out. I mean, I think he definitely wants to be in coaching. I think he loves coaching football or else he would have retired a few years ago when Brady left New England. Um so, you know, he said something today, like he wants to be in kind of a small media market, or at least that's reporting out there. Doesn't want to deal with all of, all of that nonsense. Doesn't want to be in, you know, under the, the hand of Jerry Jones. So, Bill, we've, we got a spot for you in a small media market. Um, I, I, I Like I said, it's less than 5% chance of happening. With Rabel, I also think it's unlikely, and I, I don't want that. I mean, his defenses have been bad. And, you know, I, I don't think him and LeFleur necessarily have that great of a relationship, even though LeFleur co coached under him for one year. And two, it's just like, I mean, this is contrary to what I said with Belichick, but, you know, like if you're hiring variable, I, 
I think it's not long. I don't think he's going to get another head coaching spot this year just because there's not that many seats at the table. And a lot of those seats are going to be taken up by like minds like offensive minds like Ben Johnson and Bobby Slowick. Um, but I, I think after this year, he'll he'll probably have another job waiting for him because um, I, I do think he's a great leader. So, I mean, you're really not like really not planning too much for the future with Vrabel. And it would be difficult for, you know, to expect guys to kind of buy into the scheme for likely only one year. So yeah. anyways, those are the two pipe dream candidates. We'll <laughs> see who they interview, man. If they interview Bill Belichick for the defense coordinator job, oh man, I'd get excited. But like I said, I, I doubt that is happening. I, I shouldn't even be throwing it around. <laughs> all, all I'm thinking about, honestly, after you said that was imagine just like going the quick, quick trip and then seeing Bill Belichick like <laughs> at like the food station and picking out like cheesy breadsticks. Oh like, man, imagine, that'd be that would be legendary. I feel like Bill would be a Glazers guy, but uh, he would be. oh yeah, yeah, he he would be there. I, I can already imagine the Super Bowl documentary now for next year. Bill Belichick is the defense coordinator, and instead of you know. Super Bowl 45 documentary opens with like Mike McCarthy talking about a Starbucks order. This one, it would open with like Bill Belichick, like ordering, like getting glazers at quick trip. And when the, the uh, cashier tells him to see you next time, he just, he just like mumbles. (laughs) (laughs) I need that to happen now. He sold me. He sold me on that one. (laughs) This conversation is off the rails, but Billy, (laughs) Come here, please. I like even just for the storylines of Bill Belichick being a defense coordinator in Green Bay is just an insane idea. But yeah, yes. it's don't don't get your hopes up for that. Um, so interviews, I'm sure they'll be starting to look at those soon, and I'm excited for it. Um, also, uh, it, I mean, Bigby, any other thoughts on Joe Barry leaving and any other um, potential coordinators? I'm not really. I'm just really happy. I'm glad that's over. I just want to I just want to flip the page to an actual like decent defensive coordinator for once in my lifetime. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, all we've known in our life has been Capers, Pettin and uh, Barry. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on to uh, another move the Packers made today. Uh, they also did fire strength and conditioning uh, conditioning guy, uh, Chris Gizzy. Um, who has been with the team for some time, played for the Packers in the early 2000s as well. And this was interesting. I mean, he just seemed to have a lot of respect in Green Bay. Um, but uh, it, it does make a little bit of sense. You know, they they had a lot of soft tissue injuries this year. Um, and, you know, I, I get Matt's, you know, desire for there to be improvement in that area. Uh, we, you know, Christian Watson said yes, or on Tuesday, that, you know, he's going to be looking, really doing some research and work this offseason to, you know, see what's wrong with his hamstring. Like, if there is anything wrong with his hamstring, maybe it's just really bad injury luck, um, you know, but it, it really dampered his season. And um, Matt LaFleur said that both Watson and Jones are going to be doing some program at UW-Madison, just kind of looking into those injuries. So that will be really exciting. And um, I really hope we get some type of, publication out of that and to their research um you know i I don't know exactly what they're doing how in-depth it's going to be um but it would be really cool if you know like boston college in like 2011 had the revolutionary research on brain injuries and ct and i'm not saying this this study on christian watson aaron jones is going to be anything sort of as groundbreaking as that but I, i would like uh to see it, it just some insight into their research. Um, yes. So that'll be interesting to watch. So fired Gri- Gizzy. I don't know where they exactly look for his replacement. I don't think there's, uh, I, you know, that will probably be, I couldn't blame Matt if he looks for one of his buddies from a former team um, to give that job to. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Um. I think that's all for today's news. Um, they also, the Packs also signed a kicker, uh, Jack Potolozny, um, who is, he was a kicker at Georgia, undrafted free agent this past season. So uh, a few days late, in my opinion, to bring in some competition for Anders Carlson. But now 
he has a, a former SEC foe in that room uh, to compete with this offseason. So we'll see how that works out. And like the action from the, the Packers today, getting right on it. So should be an uh, exciting offseason ahead. Um, any any thoughts on kicker or uh, strength and conditioning, Big B? Um, yeah, the ki- the kicker seems automatic. Uh, f- from inside inside the thirty yard line, so that's beautiful. And what if uh, the Packers the- like revolutionary idea here, Matt? Like have um this guy from Georgia kick like extra points and anything like uh below forty, and then Anders for everything else, like. <laughs> I, I'd be down for that. I mean, I mean, if why, they're why not? If, if it's successful, then I I think it's worth two roster spots for kickers. Yeah, I mean, might as well. I mean, better than like uh, Caleb Jones rotting away on the roster. I mean, oh, all right, that was kind of a stray. I love Caleb. Don't 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 take that <laughs> the wrong way. Don't, yeah, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Okay, so that's all for today's news. And then we did – so we recorded a segment yesterday, Tuesday, um, talking more about, like, uh, our experience with the 49ers wild card game or the divisional game. And so the only problem with that episode, though, was, like, the entire second half that we were talking about should the Packers fire Joe Barry. So we, we wanted to record this part today and add that on. And then also in that episode, I had, in my opinion at least, an incredible rant – about fandom and unfortunately zoom completely screwed that part of the recording up so i'm going to try to re-encapsulate all the emotions i felt in that part because it was really just a, a six minute speech so you know what I'll, let me just get into character again and start off the same way i did originally and ask you big b was there a point after saturday's game where you're like man fandom kind of feels pointless we do this every year just to end the the season with pain yeah, not not really uh, this year. I know the last uh, what is it, like three years now. I've I really I thought about that a few times after the heart wrenching losses. But you know, this year there's so much more to look forward to in the future. And you know, I just didn't really think about that for the first time. Yeah, I definitely see that. But then there's also, I don't know if I'd say it, I I fan of felt pointless to me after this game. But there is definitely one. A moment after every loss where I'm like, I am just so jealous. And this is really after like not only like playoff uh, losses, but also just even regular season losses because those affects you too. Um, of just like, I'm I'm jealous of people that aren't fans of sports teams, that aren't so emotionally invest- invested into the sin that they have no control over. And then it kind of hit me like, no, like the the, the experiences that fandom brings you you really have to appreciate. And uh, I was like, man, my life would just be so incredibly dull without the Packers in my life. Like um, so much of my interest, how I spend my free time is dedicated to the Packers. And then the the people in my life, um, the, the experiences that the Packers bring us are so special to me. Um, and you really can't get so caught up in um, – you know, the, the goal for the team every year should be to win the Super Bowl. No doubt. Anybody who in, who is in that building who um, has a season where they don't win the Super Bowl and think it's a successful year should be out of that building. OK, that should be the ultimate goal every single year. But as fans, I feel like we get a little too caught up in titles or just championships and thinking that defines our experiences as fans, because you know, going into this season, we, we didn't expect the Packers to have any shot at the Super Bowl. And they were fairly close to it. Fairly close to um, beating the 49ers, going to an NFC Championship game, and having their easiest opponent in an NFC Championship game in a while. Right? Like Buccaneers in 2020, 49ers in 19, uh, Seattle in 2014, Bears in 2010. All very tough opponents. The Buccaneers or Lions this year, I mean, they're two really good teams. I think the Buccaneers were rather underrated with how they were playing near the end of the season. But they would be, by far, the easiest opponent the Packers had in the NFC Championship game um, in a while. And so, it, like, that makes this season, just to have that ripped out of your hands, really heartbreaking. But, you know, like, I, I, I think we can't get too caught up in that idea of championships. 
Like, obviously, it'd be a great memory for us. We really have no control over that. You just have to really, like, view the season and change your perspective and think, you know what? This season brought us a lot of great memories. We talked ad nauseum about how exciting this team was to watch. Uh, Not only individual performances from players, but just the complete turnaround this team had during this season was just so entertaining so inspiring to watch really um to watch this team grow and it was so easy to fall in love with this team because you were there we got the hard moments early we got a little taste of victory early on in the season a little taste of how special they could be and then right after that like we went through with the dumps with these guys and then we saw suddenly saw these really young players just turn it around and so you know you just have to change perspective and you know Instead of being so disappointed about not winning the title, just be appreciative of the moments that gave um, that this team gave you. And you know, as cheesy as it is, not be sad that it ended, but be happy that it happened. Cherish the moments you had, you know, watching the game with loved ones. Um, and cherish all the moments it brought you. Um, you know, I, like I said, this this team this season meant so much to me, and uh, you know, a lot of people in my life that wouldn't be there. If I if it wasn't for Packers fan I'm listening, uh, this team is very special, and I was very happy to see you know the reaction to this loss. Uh, there was some pain afterwards, but it was just so refreshing after all the past years of just being like, all right, the Super Bowl window is just like getting closer and closer to being slammed on our hands. Um, just a point disappointment from that to now, just so much more optimism with this fan base. Seeing, you know, the players arrive back at Austin's travel at 4.30 in the morning on Sunday and there was fans greeting them there, cheering on them on, um, it w- was awesome. And I'm, you know, really happy to be a Packers fan in this moment. So not as quite as fiery as I was in my original take, but I, I hope I got the point across because that has been keeping me up at night. Um, so, yeah, big B, any... Uh, Final thoughts before we throw it to our recording we got done yesterday. Yeah, I mean, the season has been super special. It definitely reminded me of why I'm a Packers fan, why I love the game of football. And, you know, it really it really got me excited for the future years to come because I know that there's, there's something special going to be happening very, very soon, and I'm very excited about it. All right, we are going to throw it now to what we did yesterday. Big B, how are we feeling uh, what three days removed now? Yeah, still feel a little sad, you know, mostly mostly because we won't see this team until next September. So it's gonna be a long time having to wait to see Jordan Love throw some throw some master classes our way. But until then, got a long way to go this off season, and I'm very excited for this off season. Yes, exactly. That's my thoughts on it too. Um, you know. As much as I like, I'm fully on board with other people saying, Oh, the future is so bright. Like, I agree with that. But what really gets me excited is um, that idea compounded with um, the fact that they are going to be able to improve even more um, in this upcoming offseason. They have four draft picks in the first 100 picks, um, two in each, the second and third round uh, at pick 25, um, and, and, you know, possibly a coordinator change. Um, a little bit more flexibility in free agency and cap space. Um, they really don't have many um, free agents. I'm all that worried about losing. Um, you know, there's a few guys I'd really like them to to bring back, and we'll talk about that a little bit um, later in this episode and down the line. But I'm I'm just really excited. You know, they they definitely have a, a nucleus of guys who can win a Super Bowl in the next few years. And that's that's really exciting. And, you know, I I think this is actually going to be our most optimistic episode after a playoff loss. Um, and we've we've done plenty of episodes on the Underage Packers podcast after a playoff loss. Um, but I, I like the, the one after Tampa was just very grim. But um, now here we are. And it, it just like, OK, we have just opened the window and really the window wasn't even open this year, but they almost found a way to slide through the crack, um, which is really disappointing. Like that, that game sucked. 
um, you know, a lot of comparisons to Seattle and the fact that, you know, the, the Packers have the ball at like the 15 yard line with six minutes left. Aaron Jones has got like a 60 yard run. And if they score, they could go up two possessions with six minutes left. And then drive stalls, Andrews misses a kick. All of a sudden, San Fran goes down and scores, straighten the clock, and Jordan and the Packers offense does not do anything with that last minute. So, like, it, it does absolutely feel like we had a golden ticket ripped out of our hands. And while I get the people, like, the, like oh, we weren't even supposed to be here type thing, it's like, okay, but they were. Like, it, it does not make it any less uh, painful and all that, and they, they needed to capitalize on the opportunities. But, you know, f- from the past years, coming off of a playoff loss like this, uh, you know, and there were, a, like, the Lions game, the um, Buccaneers game, uh, the the 2021 loss against San Fran, too, it's like, okay, this is, like, this cannot be happening for how much experience this team has. And it's the same thing every year. Um, and that it doesn't only fall on Rodgers. Um, you know, he plays a big part of it, but it, it was unacceptable for that team because the window was closing with each year. And now it, it's just wide open. So it, that game absolutely sucked. Um, and like I said, once Aaron Jones had that big run there to start that drive, I I know me and Big B, like, what, what were you thinking after that moment? I was like, I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to say it out loud. But we might win this game. We might be going to the Super Bowl eventually. I, so that's mostly where my headspace was. After, yeah, after Jones got that run, I was like, the Packers have a very good chance to make the Super Bowl because the Lions, as, you know, yeah. I, and no disrespect to them, they are a, a very solid team. Um, but the Detroit Lions would be the easiest opponent the Packers have had in an NFC Championship game in quite some time i think there was some some people like assuming oh we just beat c and fran and then we you know we easily knock out tampa or detroit it's like well the backers did get embarrassed to both those teams in the regular season i know they beat detroit also but it, it, it wouldn't be a given but you know still doesn't take away the point that the the two toughest teams the packers would have had to face would be in the first two weeks um and they outplayed both of them for all eight quarters, in my opinion, um, except for three drives in each of the Cowboys and uh, Niners game. Outside of that, they they outplayed both of the top two teams in the NFC. And that is it, it, just another reason that I'm really optimistic about this team, because not only are they able to like they can look good against, you know, some worse teams. Uh, I mean, they did play down just their competition that sometimes but, like not only can they look good, um, you know, even against the evenly matched team. But when they're going up against the top in talent, they are able to compete with them. And even when the Packers were that top in talent, they were not able to compete with other teams at the top of the mountaintop. I mean, you look at how they played against uh, Tampa and how they played against San Fran in 2019 through 2021. It's like, man, they, they didn't stand a chance against them. So this year is different. This team feels different. And I'm I'm just really excited what they're able to do and how they're able to learn from this game. Um, you know, like there there was a great TikTok of a Niners fan saying, like, look, Packers fans, you should not, you know, keep your head up, man. Like your your quarterback has shown all the potential in the world, has played great, and now he is undoubtedly going to use this opportunity as a learning moment because he like he needs you need to fail to be able to learn from your mistakes. You need to have mistakes to be able to learn from them. Um, and now Jordan has made that mistake multiple times this season. Um, you know, early on, Denver, um, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, all the same situation where he can win the game on a drive and he throws a boneheaded pass that's intercepted. I I have a feeling having a year of doing that three, four times, especially when the season ends on it, I think I it, it's hard to see Jordan not learning from that moment. And that's something that can be fixed. Um, his like what he needs to learn, obviously, though, is not how to better make those cross body throws um, near the sideline. That like, no, what he needs to learn is to not to do that, to learn to live another down, uh, to make smarter decisions. And um, I, I'm, I'm really excited for uh, 
what what he can do for us in the future and the the playoff runs to come. You know, as far as needs, looking at needs for this offseason, I think the need for a safety was eliminated more than ever in this game um, with Darnell Savage play. I I really think Darnell had a solid season, a great improvement from last year. But, I mean, just seeing him get absolutely ate up by Christian McCaffrey, who, you know, is a very good running back. But, you know, so Savage gets in the box with him, and he has he's the last resort for the play, and he just absolutely, like, misses, absolutely whiffs on Christian McCaffrey. Like, you can't have that. That, <laughs> that, lost, that was seven points for the Niners right there. Um, I'm not like, you know, I'm obviously it's his responsibility for dropping that in, interception that would have been a pick six in the first quarter, but I like I'm not as mad as him for that as I am the that that terrible tackle attempt and the many other mistakes he had um, throughout this game. So safety is definitely still a need, and even then, like I think Jonathan Owens, um, Simone Biles played really solid throughout this season, but as like for what he was worth, you know, as a, a veteran depth piece. So I, you know, I do like Anthony Johnson Jr., uh, the draft pick from last year. So I, I would like to see them invest in that, uh, in that position again. I mean, Bigby, what are your thoughts on the safety position? Then also, kind of what other positions are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, if you take away um, all of the uh, free agents this year at the safety room, we just got Anthony Johnson, and then two guys who we just signed the futures contract. So there's really nobody there. So we're going to probably have to sign somebody back from free uh, our free agent class. I'd like to see them go out and get somebody from a free agency. Like, I don't know if we could afford an, uh, Antoine Winfield Jr., but somebody uh, a little lower category than that um, in the safety room would be fantastic. And also a draft pick would be ideal. Antoine um, Winfield Jr., but, but not only – I don't, I mean, I don't, his asking price is going to be pretty insane. I mean, like he was, yeah, you know, like potential defense player of the year candidate. Um, so, but I mean, I think they'd have a lot if they change defense coordinators, at least. I think they'd uh, have a lot to offer to Anthony Johnson or a very enticing author, at least to come to Green Bay. Um, and I mean, he, like I said, he would not only change around like the play, bring a lot in that department, but also just total culture change. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, go on. Yeah, but um, like you said, I like every I like what the safety room did this year. I think they did a great job for their expectations coming in this year and just how we thought how terrible the safety room was. I think everybody played fantastic for their expectations that we had for them. Um, but you know, I the running back room. You know, we don't know what's going to happen there with uh, Aaron Jones. AJ Dillon is a free agent. Patrick Taylor is a free agent. So that's a big question mark that I'm excited to see what they do there. I would love AJ Dillon back on a cheaper deal. I he would probably take a hometown discount. So I would I would I would assume he would be back on a on a cheaper deal, maybe like a one year prove it deal type contract. Um, and also Aaron Aaron Jones, he needs to be back next year. Like there's no ifs ands or buts about it. You need this guy on your team. You need this guy on this squad next year and he's just an amazing leader he's just like a, a building block for this team and just keeps this entire offense together and the offense plays amazing with him also so that, that entire running back room is just um on my mind and i'm mm-hmm. very excited to see what happens yes um what they do at running back will be really interesting for both jones and dylan um, I would I would like to see them bring Emmanuel Wilson back. He definitely seems to have uh, some potential. Um, Jones, I mean, I really hope they restructure him. I agree with you as far as both of them possibly taking hometown discounts. Uh, they really like playing for the Green Bay Packers. Both of them seem to do. Um, AJ, I don't see him having much of a market out there. Uh, but they absolutely, I, I will be shocked if they don't draft one on day three. Because um, yeah. both those guys' times are are limited um you know you you hope to get hopefully one more year out of aaron jones and then after that you know everything else is gravy on top um as far as what he could offer you i mean like he looks like better than he has in all of his career in these past five games but you know yeah. life catches up to you quickly at at the running back position 
Um, so I, I would really like to see them draft one, maybe two running backs this year because I I just do not want Jordan Love to fall to the same fate that Aaron Rodgers did um, early on in his career of just having no running backs. I mean, Aaron Jones is far and away the best running back Aaron Rodgers ever played with in Green Bay. Um, you know, like Ryan Grant was solid. Um, he, he was pretty good and probably underrated in uh, Packers fan history, I'd say. Um, but, I mean, they're – like, after, besides Ryan Grant, like, James Sark's solid. You know, you, you can't rely on him in the same way that you can Aaron Jones, though. Um, so, mm -hmm. draft running backs, you know, you're going to miss on some of them. But uh, see what you can get from there. If you can find, like, really, the main thing is just longevity and consistency. Anybody who can offer you, like, six years of good play at the running back position, that is, like, that is golden as far as running backs go. So we'll see what they do in the draft this year. I mean, I would also, as far as need goes, uh, offense tackle is going to be a big one. Um, I feel like as Packers fans, we are just kind of trained to, like, want to draft offensive linemen over and over again. We have been brainwashed. Like, just keep on drafting them. All offense tackle <laughs> first year or first round every single yeah. year. Keep on doing it. Uh, well, they, it's not like they draft – First round every year, but and pretty much every draft. I think this past draft was like the first in forever. They didn't draft offensive linemen at some point. So uh, that'd be big, especially yeah. with, you know, question of David Bakhtiari's future. And I really like Rashid Walker. I really like Zach Tom at, at both tackle positions. But still, just, just keep on keep on pumping them out. Same with edge rusher. Uh, can never have enough of those either. Um, so really, I mean, they, there's just a lot of spots. I would say the main two needs – um, our safety and inside linebacker. We didn't hit too much on inside linebacker, um, but it got to patch those up. The middle of the field has been too much of a problem for too long of a time on this defense. Got to patch those up. All on that, add to the positions, add depth, add for the future, which this is just like um, perfect like plate for uh, Brian Gutekinds to fill up. He loves these types of drive to, to add some depth and add to the future of this team. So, Really excited for it. Should be an exciting off season, uh, and we'll have you uh, covered throughout that. So we appreciate you tuning in not only to this episode and then also throughout this uh, entire season. Uh, with that being said, we'll talk to you later. As always, go Pack Go.